Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today we've got a lot to talk about still with the Australian weather scene. Currently an east coast low sitting off the Victoria and New South Wales coastline impacting Tasmania, Victoria and New South Wales with heavy rainfall. More powerful cold fronts on the forecast for Western Australia and a heap of rainfall for the Wollongong Sydney coastline later on this week. All of that plus more coming up in today's forecast update. If you haven't already then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Your support is greatly appreciated. We're starting things off now now with the satellite picture before we talk about New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania, the East Coast low, which you can see just down here. It's not really an East Coast low, but it is a low pressure system uh, currently sitting in the Tasman seat. And it is actually relatively strong with a lot of rain and wind wrapping around it. In fact, up to 30 millimetres expected today for uh, Hobart and up to 55 millimetres expected for some locations on Tasmania, 80 millimetres expected for some locations around Mallacoota in Victoria. And you can see that right now, this system moving quite close to the coastline now with some pretty good thunderstorm convection reciprocated on uh, radar imagery here which you can see over the past six hours some heavy rainfall has been falling around the storm center especially in the southern parts of New South Wales areas around uh, the captain's flat area in the Australian Capital Territory have been receiving some very heavy rainfall uh, up to 100 millimeters has fallen for some locations and also streaming into the Victorian coastline here on the, the southeastern uh, Gippsland coast we're talking about up to 30 or 40 millimeters extra falling on top of the rainfall that has already fallen there. Some heavy falls have also been reported and there is a minor flood watch in place for the Gippsland's region. Um, there is some flooding that is expected throughout the course of today because of the amount of rainfall that is occurring. So if you do live in that area, make sure you are staying vigilant around rivers and creeks as well because the weather will be quite nasty there. And also on the, the eastern coast of Tasmania for areas between uh, St. Helens right down towards the southern tip of Tasmania, Matsika Island and uh, communities around there, Bruni Island, expecting some heavy rainfall throughout the course of today as well, but it'll be concentrated on the east coast. And once you get further um, inland up the Doant River into Hobart and areas around Hobart, the rainfall will be a lot more light to moderate. Uh, Hobart's actually just expecting 25 millimetres of drizzle today, so it's going to be a very miserable day down there in Hobart. Cold, wet, miserable, uh, quite typical weather for this time of the year, but still awful weather down there. But yeah, that is just the recap on the system that's currently occurring there. There are some strong winds actually along the Tasmanian coastline here at Eddystone Point. We're looking at 70 km an hour winds out of the south and gusty winds extending right up the coastline of Tasmania and even up towards uh, New South Wales and Victoria uh, Green Cape we're looking at winds of around 50 km an hour at this time 50 km an hour for Mallacoota at Gabo Island Lighthouse and then down here at Ahogan Island still 50 km an hour there as well and into the mountainous areas as well just outside of Omeo at Falls Creek winds 50 km an hour as well with a chance of snowfalls today or weak snow flurries and that wind's really starting to pick up through there from the west and they will be quite gusty throughout the morning and early afternoon hours before hopefully easing off this evening. But just taking a look up here and towards Canberra, very heavy rainfall moving through the area at this time as well. So in the Capital Territory and around Captain's Flat as well, expecting some pretty heavy rainfall to occur throughout the course of today. That's just the happenings around Victoria, New South Wales and Tasmania. Nothing really interesting at this time of the year. Uh, this is pretty stock standard weather, but we do have a lot of rainfall expected later on uh, this week. Beginning from around Wednesday evening and into Thursday, we're going to see this low pressure area materialize in the Tasman Sea south of Lord Howe Island and that's going to spark some showers and thunderstorms offshore from New South Wales. Turn these wind observations off, they are quite distracting. But some moderate to heavy rainfall is expected to materialize throughout the course of Thursday and Friday and this rainfall will actually be heavy at times, especially Thursday for parts of the New South Wales Victoria coastline and then as this system develops into what looks like or what could resemble an east coast low here, it doesn't look strong enough at all to become an east coast low but still looks Looks like some low pressure system develops here and it's going to be surrounded by heavy showers and storms and if those get themselves over the New South Wales coastline expect some very decent falls to occur there. In short, some moderate falls are expected through Victoria and New South Wales to the latter parts of this week. We're talking between 20 and 40 millimetres. Nothing crazy, but nothing too light either. And then along the coastal fringes around Sydney and Wollongong, there's going to be some heavier rainfall totals up towards 80 millimetres on the cards. And even one or two places that could pick up up to 120 millimetres as well. I mean, here Wollongong expecting 60, but just outside, we're still looking at totals up towards 110 or 120 millimetres. Also some good rainfall as you get further inland towards Orange Parks, Young Loose, 
sort of areas. 50 millimetres expected there, which is fantastic for the agricultural communities. Um, but the rainfall eases off as you get further south on the coastline, about 50 to 70 millimetres. And be, don't be fooled by this blue patch through here, which resembles more than 130 millimetres of rainfall. A lot of that is going to be falling throughout the rest of today. And only about 30 to 50 millimetres can be expected from this low pressure system later on this week. But it still looks like a pretty good weather system here. Certainly going to be something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. I don't think the wind threat is going to be too high from this weather system. There will still be some powerful wind gusts, but they'll only be impacting areas on the coastal fringes of Victoria and the southern parts of New South Wales. It doesn't look like the winds are going to be too strong for the Sydney metro area or the beaches around Sydney, but still just be warned some gusty winds are expected from Friday afternoon right through Saturday and even into Sunday as well. So take care if you are in or around the water because boating conditions and coastal conditions will likely be hazardous considering the wind gusts here, which will be approaching 70 to 80 kilometers an hour at times offshore from New South Wales. And that will obviously result in some very high wave heights as well. Saturday morning, we're going to be seeing all those wave heights climb up towards four meters or so. Um, that's including the swell, but total wave height, yeah, three to four meters in height. Uh, very significant wave heights, but thankfully keeping themselves far enough away from land. And yeah, it does look like this weather system could be reasonably strong at some point. The Axis G3 calling for a very similar forecast to what the e stimulus F model is calling for, just a slightly stronger low pressure system, but considering it's a little bit further out to sea, then that will kind of just cancel out the impacts or the expected increase in impacts to New South Wales that a stronger weather system would bring. They're expecting a very similar number in terms of rainfall and also a very similar location in terms of rainfall. The GFS has a slightly different solution to what the Axis G3 and the e stimulus F forecast model have. They're calling for this weather system to be a lot closer to the New South Wales coastline. Typically, the GFS is the most reliable model, especially in the mid to long term forecast period. But at this time here, considering the Eastern Bluff and the Axis G3 are basically just reflections of each other, I'm going to go with the first solution that we were talking about a couple of minutes ago, where we're talking about rainfall accumulations between 50 and 80 millimetres, isolated totals up to 120 millimetres around Wollongong. The GFS calling for a little bit more rainfall and also a little bit more wind threat and wave threat as well because it is a stronger low pressure system closer to land. But I don't think that that is a possibility at this time. We're going to have to wait and see till Tuesday or Wednesday when this low pressure area starts to develop to really make a final call on this weather system. But nonetheless, it does look like it is going to pack a relatively heavy punch, especially for a non-severe warned system. I doubt this system will go severe warned as per the Bureau of Meteorology's guidelines, but it will be up there in terms of peak rainfall accumulations. 120 millimetres is nothing to be fobbing off. That could cause some minor to moderate flooding in some locations, especially south of Wollongong, which have been inundated with rainfall over the last couple of months. Just take a look at the drought map here. They are much wetter above average. We're talking about 20 to 30% wetter above average. And as you go further into New South Wales as well, more like 50 to 60% uh, soil moisture values above average. Um, and if the rainfall was to creep further south, the flooding threat will be minimal. Uh, however, considering it is around Sydney and Wollongong, which have already been inundated by heaps of rainfall this year, it looks like there is going to be a little bit of a flooding problem as a result of any rainfall that falls in this area. So that is a little bit of a concern and certainly something to keep in the back of our heads, especially as we get in towards uh, the time uh, when this where the system will be impacting. So yeah, just make sure that you've kept it in mind, considering that the, at the end of this week and this weekend could be a wet one for the Sydney um, area, especially in the southern suburbs. Take care on the roads as well, especially Thursday, Friday and Saturday, because they will be wet, they will be slippery. And also take care around rivers that are prone to flooding, because there is certainly that chance of minor or even moderate flooding around around Wollongong. In terms of other significant weather around the eastern coast, really nothing to be talking about. It looks like South Australia might be in for its first good rainfall around the Adelaide metro area later on in the forecast period though, but we're talking like next Tuesday or Wednesday, the 11th or 12th of June, so the forecast still remaining very uncertain on that part, and as a result, that cold front coming through looks like some good snowfall accumulations as well on the Australian Alps. We just haven't had some good snowfall yet up there, which is a little bit of a concern considering we're really moving into snow time at this time mid-June uh, is typically when those first really big snowfall accumulations start to come down and it doesn't look like there's any on the forecast right now so I'm getting a little bit concerned for snow and ski season 2024. It looks like it could be a complete bust and over in um, South Australia as well uh, looks like some um, heavy rainfall is more than needed at this point especially on the Air Peninsula but it looks like Adelaide might get a good helping to some rainfall. Far North Queensland looking dry, the Northern Territory looking dry as well. The remainder of South Australia might be in for a little bit of rain Rainfall. And the central parts of Western Australia as well, currently in for a bit of rainfall throughout the course of today, but that is easing off at this time. 
I didn't mean to do that, would have pulled the satellite imagery right up to its current time. Yeah, the rainfall in central Australia easing off at this time looks like the south and the north interior districts received about 30 to 40 millimetres overnight, but that is since easing off. It looks like conditions are going to be high and dry up there. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like any rain observations in central Western Australia that would be relevant. No, uh, so we don't actually have a good idea of what's actually fallen in there, but I'd say 20 to 30 millimetres has fallen, especially around Warburton and the northern parts of the goldfield. So it looks like it's going to be a good start to wildflower season 2024. Now, we still have very severe weather inbound for Western Australia. There's some big cold fronts coming through towards the end of this week and into next week, uh, or this weekend, actually. Looks like Thursday, we've lined up for a big cold front coming through again, up to 30 millimetres possible from this weather system. Looks like heavy rainfall is going to be the main threat, but behind it, there could be some strong winds as well, with gusts up to 70 or 80 kilometres an hour. Looks like this system might actually go severe warned again and might be labelled as one of the strongest fronts of the year. Just taking a look at this forecast here, it does not look pretty at all. Looks like some storms are going to be coming Coming in, it'll be nothing compared to the storm that we had on Saturday night and into Sunday morning. That was violent, but it also looks like a lot of places missed out in the worst of the conditions there and only copped some rainfall. Fremantle in particular, I've not heard any reports of significant storm activity there, but thankfully it does look like the, uh, this system here is going to be much weaker as a whole compared to the one on Saturday. Just a bit of thunder and lightning and some heavy rainfall is possible, so there is that chance of flash flooding. And it's unfortunately coming through Thursday evening as well, so make sure you are taking extra care on those roads on the evening evening commute and it is basically a set in stone at this time the GFS and the Axis G3 forecast models calling for the exact same forecast pretty much and considering the proximity that this storm is to uh, I guess it's landfall it's crossing of the southwest corner it looks like it is a set in stone at this time the south coastal regions as well expecting up to 30 or 40 millimeters as well from this weather system maybe 50 for one or two lucky towns uh, that probably don't need any more rainfall at this time but the Perth metro area between 20 and 30 millimeters is a set in stone at this this time and then more rainfall coming through on Friday as this weather system moves up into the central wheat belt and into the gold fields and then it looks like Saturday afternoon a complex low pressure system sweeps in from the north this one here is something that I haven't seen on the forecast in the last couple of years but it looks like it's going to be a really strong one in terms of damaging winds temperatures likely to be quite warm on Saturday also by the looks of things because of those northeasterlies that are going to be swinging down but in terms of the weather system here, a lot of rainfall expected to precede this cold front coming through, maybe 30 millimetres of the stuff in terms of heavy showers and thunderstorms on Saturday night and then into Sunday morning. But just an interesting thing that I would like to note is that the ECM Lear forecast model is the only forecast model presenting that solution. The Axis G3 does to a degree, but it doesn't bring this front in until about Sunday morning. And the GFS not bringing this cold front in across the coast until about Sunday mid-morning or early afternoon to the Perth metro area. So it looks like Saturday has has a chance of being relatively dry and it looks like Sunday it's going to be the wet day before the shower pool behind this cold front which is going to be rather violent kicks in for the Perth metro area and that will be our first real big taste of winter. We've got those massive wind gusts, those big showers coming through, heavy rainfall, small hailstones, that sort of stuff and it looks like that's going to be coming through on Sunday as well but here it looks like the GFS forecast model pushing this rain out of Saturday and into Sunday and as a result looks like we might get one dry day this weekend which would be much appreciated because it has just been rain for the last week in the Perth metro area and then behind it some heavy showers can be expected damaging winds as well and small hailstones as with every cold front by the looks of things but yeah just a concern that the eastern wave from the Axis G3 are calling for this complex low pressure system to precede this cold front I think the eastern wave might be going overboard here in terms of complexity I don't think that that is possible especially in a uh, winter based system there's just too much thunderstorms and too much low pressure system activity to be going on it looks like a tropical cyclone creeping down the coast but I do think that there is an element of I guess accuracy in terms of the Axis G3's big bulge in it here it looks like a lot of rainfall is possible to proceed this cold front it'll be that light to moderate rainfall that big heavy sparse drops type rainfall but it looks like Saturday night and into early Sunday morning some heavy rainfall is possible around the Perth metro area and then as this cold front comes through damaging winds and heavy rainfall also a possibility Let's talk straight about rainfall accumulations at this time now. We're looking at about 120 to 140 millimetres in terms of peak rainfall accumulations. Thankfully, they are offshore. But as you get onshore, even up towards Geraldton, you're talking about up to 80 millimetres extra. Same thing with the Eastern Blue Forecast model between 60 and 80 millimetres for Geraldton and Calberry, which is more rainfall that they really don't need at this time. Uh, it's certainly helpful getting about 20 or 30 millimetres up there at this time of the year, but 80 millimetres is just going to cause more problems than it does good. Down in the Perth metro area, slightly dry, I believe it or not, 70 millimetres or so. Perth itself expecting 50 from these weather systems over the next 10 days. 
and a good amount of rainfall into the Darling Ranger, 70 to 80 millimetres expected there. Plenty to top up dams, plenty to top up rain tanks as well after a very dry summer. And even inland into the wheat belt and even into the goldfields as well, up to 25 millimetres can be expected. More significant rainfall accumulations in the western wheat belt regions between 30 and 50 millimetres and probably up towards the higher end of that as well, 50 millimetres for areas that are kind of bordering that dividing range. Uh, national parks sort of area. The south coastal regions as well around Walpole, Northcliffe, Pemberton expecting around 50 to 60 millimetres, a little bit more as you get closer to the coast. Albany expecting 30 millimetres and then into the Stirling Ranges about 20 to 30 millimetres expected there. Be great to get some more rainfall there to really make it go green, but, uh, to make it more picturesque for hiking and some great rainfall as well creeping up the coast as I have just mentioned, but overall looking pretty healthy in terms of rainfall. Another big concern that I have as well is those wind gusts on Sunday going to be bringing in some big Big waves to the Perth coastal region and the southwest capes up to six or seven meters certainly going to be quite large throughout Sunday um, and that will be coinciding with some pretty dangerous wind gusts as well talking up towards 103 kilometers an hour from the eastern bear forecast here the access g3 calling for some really strong wind gusts too especially Sunday and into Monday and that is also reciprocated between the eastern bear not so much the GFS forecast model though so I do think that the GFS might be a bit of a sore thumb in this forecast here and a blend of the access g3 and the Eastern Blue forecast model is the most accurate solution at this time, leaning more towards the GFS and the Axis G3. But we will just have to wait and see. These cold fronts are still about a week away, so the forecast is relatively uncertain at this time. But just a heads up some very heavy rainfall expected this weekend, most likely Saturday evening into Sunday morning, and then some strong winds throughout the course of Sunday and Monday, big waves as well. We're talking up to 120 millimeters of rainfall for the Perth metro area over the next 10 days. And behind it, it looks like a couple of days of dry weather another big cold front here by the looks of things starting to line things up for western australia and a bit of tropical activity up here i don't know what that's about but it looks like the weather systems are going to clear off for just a few days and towards the next weekend after that about you know, 15 or 16 days away it looks like we're going to get another big cold front moving through but yeah if you're in western australia enjoy wa day today because it doesn't look like there's much rainfall on the ground or falling around the area at this time but yeah just enjoy the little break in weather maybe a day to get some washing done but i'm looking out the window and it's looking really gloomy at this time but a couple of showers here and there it looks like conditions are going to be relatively dry though throughout the course of today which is some great news indeed but yeah that is basically all that i have time for this morning thank you so much for tuning into today's forecast update your support is greatly appreciated just zooming right out to take a look at our own backyard indonesia and up into the indo asia pacific or the asia pacific region looking like it's dry there's no real typhoon or storm activity moving around the area this time which would be uh, kind of fun to track but there's really nothing on the cards at this time. It looks like those hurricane seasons are going to start to pipe themselves up though pretty soon, but I could talk about that for an hour more and I'll spare you from that. And if you want to check out more hurricane coverage, then check out the second channel at Cyclones Extra. Your support is greatly appreciated. Make sure you've left a like and subscribed as well to the channel. Leave me a detailed weather report for your location in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you uh, special shout out to the channel sponsors, their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.